Thank and thank you for coming. I'm Wayne Fields. I happen to be president of the South Broken Lands Foundation um, for now. And <laughs> now and forever. <laughs> we generally intend to have our annual meetings in May. We're sorry it slipped to July this year. The weather outside. I was running the wood stove uh, all last week in the Monday morning, I think. But uh, I guess that's why we love New England so much. Uh, this is our annual meeting. Again, thank you for being here. We have a very interesting program coming up. We're going to start with Sally Waters making a presentation for last year's Elaine Fields Award. We have two, two wonderful students who were instrumental in saving the Garfield, the Burnett Garfield House. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I was a social studies teacher for 35 years, and I always told my students that they should get involved with things that they felt were really important. And I did not have these two young ladies as students, um, but I would love to have had them because they embody the spirit of people getting involved when something important is going on. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, we heard that the Burnett Garfield House was going to be torn down and four houses were going to be built on that property. And a lot of us were wringing our hands and saying, oh no, that's terrible. Um, but we really didn't know quite what we could do about it. Up stepped these two young ladies. <laughs> and they, this is Jen Fox, who is a senior at Algonquin, and is going to be going to MIT. Oh, wow. And <laughs> Bridget Brady, she's a junior, very active, and she came from a play rehearsal and has to leave to get back to the play <laughs> rehearsal. So, anyway, um, they started to <clears throat> picket outside the, on the property and call attention to the fact that we were going to lose this, this gem, this very important house in town. And as a result, the owner and the publicity they brought to this, um, the owner did not go through with the sale to the developer who was going to tear the property, the houses down, the house and the outbuildings down. Um, some adults then stepped up and formed the Friends of the Burnett Garfield House, and they did a lot, and I'll talk about that in a second. But we did want to recognize the work of the two girls um, for all they did to help save a very important piece of property. So, Jim and Richard. Wonderful. So, um, every year we do give the Elaine Beals Award, which um, carries on the spirit of, of, of Quit's mother, uh, Elaine Beals, who was very active in land preservation in town. And last year, this is the 2016 award, we're a year behind because we could not get together. Um, schedules just didn't coincide. So we chose last year to give this award to the friends of the Burnett Garfield House. Um, and accepting that award will, will be Krista Brady, who was the fearless leader. And the friends um, did a lot of coordinating uh, with the town officials, or trying to, and finding out, trying to find out what was going on, um, informing the public, uh, educating them as to why uh, preserving this house and this property would be very important. And eventually getting the right people to town meeting so that they would support the placement of a historic preservation uh, uh, restriction, thank you, <laughs> on the property. And not only does that mean that the house is saved, but the five acres of land that it sits on was also saved, so it was not divided up into all these little pieces. And that property um, abuts state land along the reservoir, so it helps provide a corridor for um, wildlife and so forth. So, um, Krista, if you would come up and take the floor. Uh, 
by Gordon Morrison, who is a great nature artist and uh, has done things for the South Rural Open Land Foundation. So I'd like to share that. I am incredibly honored to accept this on behalf of the friends of the Vermont Get Net Garfield House. Um, beyond these two young ladies inspiring um, our community, this, this simply uh, would not have happened if some very key people didn't step forward. And it's not surprising that um, a big number of volunteers came from South Rural Open Land Foundation because they saw the importance of that property. Deb, Sally, Freddie, I believe Hewitt is a member of this group as well. Yeah. Carol. Carol, Carol, of course, Carol. <laughs> Mark, Carol. Um, and it is one of, besides seeing that that house and that land will stay forever as part of the town and, and tell the story of this place, um, it was incredibly uh, satisfactory to meet these, these fine individuals. And I have, <clears throat> as a busy mom, I learned and have a much greater appreciation for how much work goes into saving these spaces um, in town. So thank you on behalf of the Friends of the Burnett Garfield. Uh, next item is we have one one business um, matter to take care of, and that is the election of three trustees. I think that's right, Sally. Right? Yep. Um, Deb Costin, whose term expires. Myself, my term expires, and Jesse Robertson Dubois, who was appointed to fill in in uh, um, for somebody else, and that particular term is up uh, at the moment too. So. Uh, I will, propose, I will propose those three as a slate. Uh, are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, uh, we'll close the nominations and I'll accept, uh, let's see, a second. second. <laughs> right, second there. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? <laughs> Thank you. It's our honor to serve the, the board uh, for another term. Thanks very much. Uh, now. Yeah, I think you're next at that. I could possibly be. Yes. Um, I'm this um, Catherine. Yes. Uh, oh, I no. want to introduce That's Catherine we'll do that Weber. Next. Yes. Okay. This um, is an upcoming program. Yes, Catherine Weber is the one of several unofficial mayors of the Beals Preserve, and she is also an artist, and she has. Mm -hmm conceived and proposed an ongoing, another version of Art on the Trails, which we did a number of years ago for another landmark of the Open Land Foundation. So she's just going to say a few words about the progress of the project. So you know how they say, speak softly and carry a big stick. Well, I, I'm going to speak loudly and carry a big stick because I'd like to get your attention. So I spend pretty much good at least five days a week it feels preserved and I know it so well and it is such a treasure I don't know what we'd do without it and four years ago Deb Costine asked me to do uh, Art on the Trails for the 25th anniversary of SALT and I did that and enjoyed it um, she asked me to do it again and I said that I wanted to raise the bar on it a little bit so I'm going to explain to you how we're doing that first of all my background is marketing and uh, digital marketing, so I built a website called artonthetrails.com. I, I was so pleased to be able to get that domain name. And, <laughs> and I, um, there's a woman who lives down the street from me, her name is Mary Tinty, and she used to be the curator of the Fitchburg Art Museum, but she recently went on maternity leave with her first baby, and she agreed to jury the show. We put a call out, we got exceptional, exceptional submissions. This was the call. You're going to see if you go over to Beals. There's new map holders I, I installed, and there's signage there that tells people what's going on. Um, but basically, we got submissions. The deadline was May 1st. We juried in 11 artists, and um, they're installing their work in the preserve from June 1 to 3. And um, some of those works are heavy. Some of those works are going to be 
requires some assistance physically moving them in. And so I'm looking for all of you who are interested in any kind of volunteer activities, June 1 through 3. Um, I have a sign-up genius where people are signing up to, to uh, volunteer. Sign-up genius is... Sign-up uh, genius is a website, and I can say, here are all the open slots. Please raise your hand and fill one. Okay, so um, that would be really helpful. I mean, we're talking about hour and a half slots of time where you might help somebody move something. Uh, maybe you'll bring a wheelbarrow. There's lots of possibilities. Um, I'm going to send a, a letter. I, we, I did send something out last week that generally said what, what I was looking for for volunteers. Um, I can be more specific about what I need volunteers for. But the other thing I need help with is each of these is going to be a sign that has a, a label on it for the artwork. This is 12 inches square, but I hope to make them 6 inches square. And then each one of these will be a 6 inch square square. <laughs> 6 inch square on the stand. I need someone to help me fix them. And um, I think I'm going to get Staples to pay for the, the waterproof signage. And then, you know, put the signage on it and then install them in the woods. Um, during June 1 through 3. That's the next step. Um, June 7th is the opening, it's an opening reception. And what that means, we call, we're calling it a moving celebration because we're going to take drinks and perhaps some snacks and we're going to walk through the woods while the artists talk about their work. Um, we're inviting poets from the region to come and listen and then perhaps write poetry. And then in September there will be another event in which the poets will read the poetry. And there will be a chapbook produced uh, a good friend of mine owns a literary publication, Tishman Review, and she is paying to print books for everyone. And I say everyone, I'm not sure exactly how many everyone is, but it's going to be very um, significant because we're getting very good response from all the people that we know. So what I need from all of you is if you have questions for me, certainly um, you know, email me, call me, but I think I'd love for you guys, if I hand you a piece of paper, will you write your email and your name on it and tell me you're interested? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you one of these, but I'll, I'll pass something around for the next phase of the meeting, and I'd really greatly appreciate it. If you're interested in the opening or building signs or helping with installation, those are the three main things I need help with. So um, I will, I'll send a a thing around and you can write down if you have a specific thing you're interested in and I thank you in advance. And you really need some volunteers. I really do. I really do. I mean right now I'm paying for everything myself and I'm doing everything myself and I'm starting to get sponsors and stuff and I will because it's, jo it's a joy for me to do but there's some things I physically can't do and could, you know I can't be two places at once. Um, lots of things like that. So it would be really wonderful. It's going to be a lovely summer evening. I guarantee, I've asked of the gods, June 7th is going to be beautiful. And you're all going to love it. June 7th is a Wednesday, right? It's a Wednesday evening from 6 to 8. And these cards are out on the table out there, so you can all take a card. But artonthetrails.com, you can just go and read everything about it. Anything else I've forgotten? I think that's it. Okay, good. And this bag is full of all this stuff, so I am going to um, go and find a piece of paper and pass it around. Thank you. Uh, maybe. Okay. Let's let's just let me talk details as soon as I. Okay. Now, uh, Deb is going to say a few words about Al Crunch, but before she does, Al and I go back quite a long way. Go back to my days when I was working with the Sudbury Valley Trustees, which was from I think 1987 till 99. And somewhere in the early 90s, maybe even the late 80s, uh, Al came in and started talking to us about this great project that had been resuscitated, which was the Bay Circuit Trail. And I think in the early 90s, the Bay Circuit Alliance was formed. Al was working at an outdoor store up in Andover. At least that's that's where his paycheck came from, but what we, he was really doing was making the Bay Circuit Trail happen. I know that. Now I'd like to see you again. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, how many people here are familiar with the Bay Circuit Trail? 
what I grew. <laughs> so the Bay Circuit Trail, to summarize it, is now more than 230 miles of an almost continuous arc of hiking trail that starts up in Newburyport and makes this big arc way outside of Boston, goes through Southboro, <laughs> and ends all the way down on the South Shore in Duxbury at Kingston Bay. And it connects, I'm not positive about this, 50 towns. It's a, there are a few ambiguous points about it. The idea for the Bay Circuit Trail and Greenway first began, uh, arose in 1929 by a man named Benton Mackay. And he wanted to do this as an expansion of the Frederick Law Olmsted Emerald Necklace concept uh, that is in the city itself. But this was going to be an arc of a greenway quite wide basically where 128 is. And uh, it was a great idea, but um, progress, I won't even call it progress, I will call it commercial and residential development was happening much faster than this trail could be proposed and worked through all the necessary uh, channels. Um, but it was going to provide open space for the quickly expanding population of the greater Boston area. So it kind of fell away for a while. Then, in the 1970s, Alan French of Andover has uh, worked with a group of people to create the Bay Circuit Alliance to rejuvenate the concept of the Bay Circuit Trail. And that group, the Alliance, was founded in 1990. Al became its chairman and was until he eventually retired from it. And I've got 2008. 12. 12. Thank you, Al. Um, and, and at this point now, the Appalachian um, Mountain Club has assumed the leadership role. Saving open space from development can happen only when people care about land enough to do the work. The Bay Circuit Trail provides 230 miles of incentive to promote and foster a love of open space. And Al French has been leading this for over 30 years. So it is my great honor to present Al French with the um, Elaine Fields Award. So come on up, Al. the entire trail? The equivalent of six times. Oh, I'm all no. on the same Sixth. order. Yep. And only once for my late, wonderful wife Mary, and I want to have a story. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. But I will be, I'll have another opportunity in about 20 minutes, so I'll save my thunder until then. <laughs> this is wonderful. I have a very, the kind of things really pay you back by talking to Barbara Dyer, you know, that was just, and seeing Whittingham, I got more out of it than I put into it, quite honestly. And I think that's not said with a, uh, that's said as a, as a promotion to, to the rest of you, everybody. That's what this type of work does. It does give you more out than you put in. And, and that's great, because that isn't true of every investment. <laughs> For our program presentation, we're very fortunate to have Marilyn and Dan Breilman here, who have put together a documentary of the Bay Circuit Trail. So we don't just have to hear Al's stories. 
Um, I, Al was one of these people who gets a vision and he doesn't let go. He would come by the SVT office from time to time and say, how am I going to make this connection? <coughs> who do you know? Who can we talk to at the MWRA? And, or Staples or, you know, all those links. He just, he, there would be hurdles there and with some hard work and, and determination, a hurdle just either fell over or jumped over and made it happen. So it's to him that we really owe a huge debt of gratitude for there being a base circuit trail at all. Um, so, um, you're on. <laughs> okay. We're ready. Good evening, and uh, we want to thank you for inviting us tonight. We're really excited to share our multimedia presentation of the Bay Circuit Trail and its connection with the environment. Would you like the lights lowered? Would you like them like this? Um, I think this is fine. Okay. okay. Um, my name is Marilyn Roman, and I'm one half of e-awakening.com. My husband, Dan, and I, we produce environmental videos that shine a spotlight on people, groups, and organizations that are doing positive things for the environment. Tonight, Dan is going to talk about uh, the, his hike, his own personal hike of the Bay Circuit Trail in connection with the environment. And our friend Al French, who's been involved with the Bay Circuit Trail for well over 20 years, is also going to talk about his involvement. We'd like to, Dan writes and performs his own original music for all of our videos, and we'd like to start tonight's presentation with a song that he wrote specifically for the Bay Circuit Trail, and it's called Trail Town. Thank you, Marilyn. Seven-month period, and 
We'd like to show you a little bit about it. Let's join the adventure crew on the Bay Circuit Trail. Come on along and help me sing this song where the adventure grew. Join the adventure crew for over 200 miles of the Bay Circuit Trail in Massachusetts. One end starts at Plum Island and the other on the shore of Kingston Bay. The Bay Circuit Trail arcs around Boston, going through 37 communities. Follow the white blazes up hills, through wetlands, and across eskers. There's a nice, interesting old trail on the other side of this valley. It's a network of people saving open space, protecting the land, and preserving its beauty for future generations. And after over a century of work, everything is coming together. It's time to take a hike and enjoy this environmental wonder. The Bay Circuit Trail is fun, it's educational, and it's now. Check out the Bay Circuit Alliance website, baycircuit.org. And see all the segments of e-awakening.com series featuring the Bay Circuit Trail. Cause we're all connected by the trail Closer to nature, hill and dale Cause we're the adventure crew That's me and you And the whole world too Beautiful. The beautiful thing about hiking a trail like the Bay Circuit Trail is that you have all these memories. Now I remember this red-tailed hawk that flew into a tree about 20 feet above me, and I was videotaping it, and it raised its claw as if it was in a fist. And I was like, wow, is it hurt or is it like giving me the <laughs> keep going guy? <laughs> but um, creating the trail wasn't that easy. It actually was pretty difficult, and it didn't come out at all like it was dreamed to be. Uh, one man, Ben Mackay, knows firsthand the trials and tribulations of creating a trail. Uh, he's the creator of the one of the creators of the Appalachian Trail, and his dream for the Bay Circuit Trail was. A two-mile swath of green arcing around the city of Boston, connecting parks and woodlands and, and all that. And as Debbie mentioned, uh, because of um, the crash uh, during the, what was it, the 20s, there was no money to buy the land, so it was all bought up by developers. Ben Mackay was a true environmental hero. And you know, there's lots and lots of heroes around today, right now, as we've seen. Heroes like, your name is Krista? No. Jen. Jen? You're Jen and you're Krista? Heroes, I mean, you know, actually I feel like I'm in a room full of heroes because I'm sure that you we're all on the same page of what we're doing, the kind of work we're doing to save the environment. Uh, we're going to take a side trip and meet one of our contemporary heroes. But first, we'll see some of the wonderful sights along the Bay Circuit Trail. A wide trail and open forest greet me for this beautifully cool morning on the Bay Circuit. Amazed to see this creature hovering in front of me like a tiny helicopter, a hoverfly. It's hard to miss this scarlet tanager doing something like a morning dance just above me in the trees. It seems to me it's grooming, its feathers vibrating. A very special moment. Early in the morning, then it's by a dangling leaf to a bog, a swampy area, a concert of birds singing, frogs croaking, nature at its finest. Glorious bright blue skies and the sun. Today is very special because I'm meeting with a man that I've heard so much about. 
If it weren't for Alan French, there wouldn't be a Bay yeah. Circuit Trail. He's a hard guy to say no to. <laughs> <laughs> but who is this man walking through the wetlands with a shopping bag in hand? And what got him started on reviving the dream of the Bay Circuit Trail? Simply by going to a meeting at the Appalachian Mountain Club's Boston headquarters. He had a store. So he was kind of the, uh, the corporate uh, world. He was representing the corporate world. And, uh, and they were talking about doing a trek. And he, um, uh, he asked them, well, on this trek, do you uh, have any need for an old geezer like me? That's <laughs> how he put it. And what was Al's secret for galvanizing the passions of so many people, waiting for a leader to tie it all together, working at the grassroots? What that really did was it inspired people to get really interested in the Bay Circuit. A lot of people volunteered. And the whole notion that Al came up with, which I think was his genius, was this is a bottoms-up thing. You find people who are interested in every community, and you let them work out their part, and you get them together so the trails meet at the town border. The state was running it sort of as a zoning question where they would try to get all the towns in the Bay Circuit to do their master planning for buying up land and so forth. The Park Service said, get out there. You'll get the people that will use the land, then they'll vote for it. And that's how you drive the program. And it wasn't my idea, but I bought it, hook, line, and sinker. So what was Al's secret? Is it that he listens and that he really gets what you're talking about? Is it his ability to lead and get things done? Or is it that he simply cares about the environment and the trail? You know, somehow I'm never going to forget the day that I met Al French at that bench, that beautiful bench that we were sitting on. The brown bag he was carrying had varnish and sandpaper in it. And he was lovingly sanding it and varnishing it in memory of his wife, Mary. Beautiful tribute to a man who I'm going to introduce to you right now. And I want to have you welcome Al French to the center stage here. Others whose name I can't recall. But I have two, at least, 
I have a couple of memories I wasn't sure I should reveal, so I won't. But I, <laughs> Do it. I have two really interesting ones from my point of view. One is one of the privileges of a nonprofit grassroots organization. Our budget had never exceeded ten thousand dollars a year for operating expenses for twenty-five years. But what you get is a tremendous amount of freedom, really. Uh, and as a chairman of this tiny organization, it, in terms of the organization itself, not in terms of the volunteer efforts that it raised, it was wonderful. And one of the first acts in, of freedom that I had was involving your town. Because when, and in, in part of this will be revealed by the history, which I'll run through real quick, but the Bay Circuit is a long-term proposition and had many different forms from 1929 to the current time. That's a long time, a lot of different things, a lot of different impressions. But one of the hallmarks was in 1956, due to the lobbying of the Elliots, three generations of Elliots, and other folks uh, in, in the Boston area, particularly Charles Elliott III, uh, the legislature passed a law creating the Bay Circuit. 50 towns legislatively uh, as what then was, I would say, primarily a land use protection zoning state-run uh, initiative. But South Pearl was not one of those communities. You weren't right. You weren't there. <laughs> but as we all know, what automobile registrations did, and the highways and the macadam and the development, there was no way when I and others looked at the actual process of realizing this dream of a, what it started out as a 100 mile arc, uh, without making some adjustments. So one of them involved creating a, another Bay Circuit community, and was the and I had the privilege, the enjoyment, and the feeling of power <laughs> to do it. And I never asked anybody. <laughs> I just dedicated it. So that I, and between now, 50, you see, has gone up to 57. And, uh, and during my tenure, I maybe added two or three. Some of them were added legislation. Lee Hudson became a Bay Circuit community because the legislator called me up one day. I've heard about this Bay Circuit, what is it, and so forth. I said, well, can we join? I said, sure, file a bill, and she did. And Hudson is a legally Bay Circuit, but there are 57 pounds now. Second memory involves Debbie, because one of the six times that I uh, walked the Bay Circuit trail uh, involved a solo voyage. And I can't remember the, the day, uh, the day. Give or take 1980, <laughs> whatever. But I do remember the fact that there was a hurricane in this area the day that I came through the Sudbury Reservoir. And uh, I was scheduled to be met, but spend the night at, at Debbie's house. And I had family in the South Shore that knew that I was coming and were supposed to look for me, a daughter, and find me. And by the time I got opposite the gun club, the former gun club, I mean, still uh, at the entrance of the Sudbury uh, Reservoir Management Area there on Route 30. It was, I was so cold and wet, even though I had rain here, it was blowing billy. Uh, and my daughter could not find me. My, my family was desperate because they thought I was having hypothermia which Debbie may say I had, I don't know. But I remember leaning against the sign at the entrance and waiting, and, and who should find me? But Debbie came cruising down the road, picked me up, took me to Wood Road, and I've never felt more uh, rescued. <laughs> <laughs> so those are two of the, uh, the memories. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, due to the uh, technology, you're not going to be able to see the map or some of the details. But I think I can do a quick run through the history. And frankly, I think the quicker the better. This is a long term, and, and I'm going to close by saying 
History is important, but more important is the actuality, um, whether it is it today, and, uh, and so that, that's what we're going to do now. So this, oh, go back to the uh, first slide, please. Yeah, this is a 1929 uh, or, thir or 37 map, depending upon the publishing at that time, there's some difference of opinion. It was published by the trustees of public preservations, along with about a 30-page proposal. It's the first detailed proposal for the Bay Circuit. And, uh, and uh, as you can see, it's remarkable. Well, you can't see, but I can tell you <laughs> that it's remarkably uh, similar. The kind of adjustments that were made, the one I just talked about, you'll see that Southborough is outside the corridor. Another major one, this is Ames Knoll State Park in uh, Brockton, which at the time was a beautiful sylvan and it still is a wonderful park, but it's now surrounded by macadam and uh, So you can see there is a big change here. Now the, the circuit comes more like that. But it's remarkable. Uh, there are some things that were actually on the plan that were realized during the modern history. Things like uh, uh, up in Raleigh, uh, Prospect Hill, Oh, it's remarkable how much was achieved. Now, uh, what happened, this is between the uh, first beat. Did I say something funny? Two beats. That was the first beat. No, that was the second beat. I want the second. You got double beat. Right. Oh, the beat. Oh. That's the second beat. Yup. Right. Be ready. Go. All right. I'm just going to say that it reinforces what the character of this project is. It's meant many, many things to many people over the years. And it's really three phases. And I'm going to just quickly read some of these things, and then I'm going to point to what the three phases were. And that would be, you know, it starts out, these are quotations from actual publication. A series of connected reservations, a wide parkway, an eastern Massachusetts circuit of parks, an earthy footpath, an extension of the metropolitan park system, uh, a state parkway, a Bay Circuit motor route, because the motor, the, the motor vehicle was a toy in those days. It was not conceived of as a threat or a, uh, a desirable link in a statewide recreational system, a tourist route, uh, so forth. An outer emerald necklace, and again, the freedom of small, I don't know who coined that. I claim I coined that word, but I'm not sure I can support it. And somebody's going to come along someday and say I'm a liar. But we tried to play on the Olmstead concept that this was an hour emerald necklace. Uh, and then finally, the incorporation of the Bay Circuit Alliance to form an affiliation of public and private organizations concerned with public outdoor recreational use and protection of the natural environment in the base of the core. So that just shows you how a project of this long evolves. Okay. The phases really are from, uh, I would say, uh, 1937 through uh, the 80s, the end of the 80s, when essentially it was an, a zoning for open space, primarily driven by the state. The second phase was at the suggestion of the Federal Park Service, actually, that you could drive the program from the ground up, because the state ran out of money at the end of the 80s, and they were ready to can the program. Uh, and the second phase would be, let's use the concept of a trail to promote the use of open space and so forth. And then the third phase is really in the last five or six years. Got it? Clear. Okay. And you won't see this again, but I think you can get the general impression of how similar, really, except that it's now on the ground, really, as a recreational trail. And, uh, and it's also evolved three years ago into no longer a grassroots uh, environmental, small is beautiful organization. And that came about with uh, my approval, in fact, my, my institution, because I felt that it was irresponsible 
for a program that had so much success as a grassroots not to have a plan for the future. And as a result of that, we now have the third phase, which is not only 230 miles roughly of trail, but we have a future guaranteed by an organization like the stature and resources of the Appalachian Mountain Club. Uh, and uh, so that basically the history up to right now. And uh, I should have given you three beeps, I'm sorry. Uh, I won't have a closing statement. Uh, because I said, said it before, you get more out of it than you put into it. Thank you. said that what Al possesses is passion. I mean, a lot of passion for this trail. And he's telling me that he's retiring from the trail, but I, I can't believe it. You know, um, He's been working with the city of Lawrence to help uh, them access greenways. And he's also been doing a lot of other projects. But in fact, we wouldn't even be here tonight if it wasn't for Al, because this was his idea. This presentation was his idea. So what am I doing on the Bay Circuit Trail? What do I want to preserve and protect? All along the Bay Circuit Trail, I experienced the beauty and the healing powers of nature. One of the reasons I did this hike was to bring attention to the environment, bring attention to nature, attention to preserving and protecting these natural wonders. Let's experience some of the beauty. Suddenly, the woods take on new meaning. The trail in this area doesn't seem to be used much. And as I cross a road to Henry's Hill, in the open space of this meadow, there's a bench, giving me some time to ponder how important these trails are. I check my map to make sure I'm headed in the right direction and wish I had a map on how to take care of our planet. In the woods, an old carriage rusts, an antique without an owner. We hit a road and then a wide welcoming trail in a pastoral setting. Through another area of thick brush and over Gibbs Mountain. At a pristine and soothing BB pond, we have time to reflect. How do we teach the children and ourselves to care for the earth? I began to become concerned, as many of us are, with the idea that children are becoming more and more disconnected from nature. Debbie Costine shows us the puppets she's created, the cast and crew of a show she's written and produced, Turtle's New Home. See, here's the thing. I have been searching for a new, safe place to live. The place where I've lived before a road was suddenly built between the pond and the sandy place where I lay my eggs. Debbie's backyard can be seen in two ways. You can see the water as it reflects the colors of nature all around, or because of the beavers, it can be viewed as a flooded backyard inching its way into the basement. But Debbie doesn't have the time to worry. She's busy creating her works of art dreaming up the stories she writes, like the show that Edward and Rachel star in. And they get to a little brook, and that's the brook in the show, and they were hoping to see some animals. But Edward says, no animals. There aren't ever any animals around here anymore. For Debbie, it's more about the message she's trying to send school children. Did you say pond? Yeah, pond. Really? You can make a pond? Well, I can make a dam, and then the pond just happens. Oh. Debbie has been doing puppet shows since the 1970s, and she's not lost her enthusiasm. And it's really hard to take time. As an artist and naturalist, her work is not just for kids. Adults can also go away with a soft glow in their hearts. Baby, oh. Did you see that, Rachel? The baby found its mother. It's the most 
important thing to me to protect nature, to protect the environment. A final hill to crown this glorious day. We leave the pond and marvel that animals could have rubbed away parts of these trees. It's over a dam where a moss-covered fireplace stands holding countless memories secret. There are always reminders of land that is private, but we enter the public property of the Sudbury Reservoir. The sky above turns gray as it starts to rain, and I put on my rain gear. A fitting end to day 11, the halfway mark. A kind of metaphor for today's hike. So many alternatives in just one world. It's just one world. It's just one world. It's just one planet. It's just one planet. It's just one Earth. We're living on. Yeah. We talked to over 60 environmental heroes on this hike. And I saw a lot of beauty on the base of the trail. I walked through forests, woods, and fields. In some places, it felt like the wilderness. But I saw a lot of threats. I was really concerned about our environment, the health of our forests, the dying of our trees, the, uh, the ever-expanding encroachment of development. In Sherburn, they're working to keep their, their area green. Let's take a hike to Sherburn. Uh, to Sherburn. We're working with the town to get some general permits to do trail maintenance work. Chris Tolman is the president of the Sherburn Forest and Trail Association, and he also moved to Sherburn for the open space. He's a civil engineer and is certified in what he calls green engineering development. It's development, it's growth, but it's, um, I think that is more referred to as smart growth or directed developments, where you center where you want the development and you try and preserve the open space, because once the open space is gone, it's pretty much impossible to get back. This is the section of the Bay Circuit Trail within Sherburn. At Chris's computer, we get a virtual tour of the town, the trails, and all the development around Sherburn. Compared to the downtown framing area and the amount of development and pavement, compare that to the Sherburn, you can see mostly green. Uh, we can zoom in further. You can see there's still a lot of open space. Uh, you can see where the houses are and some of the bigger farms. Uh, there's a new development just across the town line into Ashland. Um, big residential subdivision. And although development is a huge threat to open space and forests, for Chris it's also about connecting neighborhoods and neighbors. A big piece for me is also connections between neighborhoods. I love being able to get out from my house and get to places and not have to drive. Some days I want to drive and that's great, but there's days I'd like to be able to walk to the center of town and go to CNL Frosties for an ice cream and I don't think I should have to drive to get there. So. Um, we're building trail connections between neighborhoods that sort of links the neighborhoods and links the open space. Cutting edge technology? Can we get from a neighborhood here to a neighborhood here through the open town property? A progressive view of what our society could be and a return to the ageless values that seem to be imbued in our human consciousness. How do we find a way to use our resources wisely and for the common good? If you live in your house and you travel everywhere in your car, you don't really interact with folks, uh, you're in your own little world. If you walk somewhere or bike somewhere or ride a horse somewhere, you end up meeting other people out there, you end up talking to them, which means you know the people in your neighborhood better, you know the people in your community better. Through the woods. All this green, surrounded by all this tar and concrete. As I enter the Rocky Narrows Reservation, with its trails and fields, grasshoppers are flying about. A rugged climb and ledges remind me of the Appalachian Trail. Then on top of King Philip's Overlook, with an elevation of 260 feet, there are views that any wilderness would love to be compared to. Hiking out onto Route 27, I marvel at the primitive beauty of the Charles River. Two kayakers paddle peacefully. Water reflects the sights, sounds, and the feelings of a companionship with nature. 
Old Route 27 harkens to a simpler time. It cracks as the earth slowly regains itself. We are in Medfield now, on a hill, a large round mushroom underfoot. Now that's a mushroom. The scene, a rugged timelessness, and a black crow proclaims his right to the earth. And I am welcome back to the world of humans. Yes, I gotta, I gotta say that Marilyn was there every step of the way. <laughs> she was my support person, and I can't say enough about Marilyn. The Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway to nature, but we have to use the gate. Thank you. Richard Lube wrote a book, Last Child in the Woods. He says that most of the children in today's society have a disorder, NDD, Nature Deficit Disorder. And I quote Richard in his book, Lacking direct experience with nature, children begin to associate it with fear and apocalypse, not joy and wonder. The whole time I was hiking the Bay Circuit Trail, I didn't see many families. But one family sticks out in my mind. I heard this screaming of joy and wonder, and all of a sudden these two little kids go running by me, and they're like, look at this, look at this, look at this. And their parents have this huge smile on their face, and they're just like soaking up the joy and wonder of their children. It's just a beautiful thing. So we have this great trail, this gateway, where children and adults can learn about nature and rejoice in it. But we need to get people on the trail so we can learn about the plants and all the things that we have lost connection with, keep our nature healthy. It's just such an opportunity. In this next clip, we're going to see how the Appalachian Mountain Club has gotten people on the trail to improve it. The Bay Circuit Trail takes us through an area of new growth, beech trees on Fox Mountain Trail. And as we come out of the Beaverbrook Woods, there are flags and a memorial to Edward F. Smith. There are several roads to walk down. All right, where is the trail? It says to turn left. It must be in here. Then at Round Table Road, I encounter one of the biggest navigational challenges of yeah. my hike. Hard to believe in this small section of woods, I feel like I'm getting lost. The blaze told me to go straight ahead now. It's hard to tell. On a day of service, Blue Cross Blue Shield employees are trained by the AMC in preparation to improve this section of trail. But there are all kinds of different people and reasons to get involved. By becoming involved in trail work, people often graduate to that level by saying, I've been hiking these trails for forever and I want to get involved. Or maybe they like building and like doing hard labor and that's kind of with trail work. You're getting out, you're getting dirty and you're working hard, um, but by doing that, you're forging a new relationship and new connections with the place and giving back to the community. Back to 2013, we leave Old Pond and its corn grinding millstone, and we get a taste of the history Easton has to offer. An old cemetery with leaning stones to the perfectly picturesque Wheaton Farm. With its expansive pastures, old fences, and wheel rutted dirt roads. Windswept skies, marshlands, and an old barn we follow this cart path out to the road and into an area known as the Hockamock Swamp. The access here is along power lines, which is also a wildlife management area. But unfortunately, not everybody plays by the rules. So here I end the day having a little camera fun and reflecting on what I've learned about the nature of being human. All right. Well, um, I wanted to get Al back up here again.
again for a little brief message on how people can really get involved in helping the Bay Circuit Trail. All right, all right. Beep. Did I get the beep of that? <laughs> I'm going to take it and beep it. Because really, what you're going to see, Tom, I don't have any new message. These, I think, are just some clips of just people that have responded to this message. And I think that's the way I introduce it. So enjoy it, and uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know because um, Al, in place. Al was really interested in helping us to get these videos out. And Marilyn will give a little bit of a, a summation on, on how you know we're using the videos. But uh, at the end of the, at the end of the talk, but um, the Bay Circuit Trail. Okay, I'm at the beginning here. Okay. Is that, is that my guy? <laughs> That's my guy. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. No, we're, we're, this is the last video clip. And, and I know it's been, it's been a long evening, and, and I hope everybody's okay. Um, we have one more video clip that we really, that really doesn't need an explanation, except to say that we desperately need more environmental heroes. We need more stories about environmental heroes. That's why Marilyn and I are doing this. Because we believe that the more people see environmental heroes, the more people will want to be environmental heroes. The Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway. The Bay Circuit Trail is a golden opportunity. We talked to a lot of people along the trail, so I got to meet a lot of people, hear a lot of stories, find out a lot about what people are doing. And for me, this one is particularly important because I'm a big proponent of knowing what we have in our own backyards. And what a backyard it is. 37 communities of trails, woods, forests, rivers, and streams. Bogs, wetlands, ponds, and all the insects, the birds, and the animals. And within this journey, we have uncovered a true and noble side of human nature, people at their best. We discovered that we have some gems and some treasures and a lot of people that are out there protecting what we have and procuring more of the open space that is still available and saving it so that we have it for future generations. We have mined our backyards for heroes, not from the past, but alive and living now doing the unsung work that will only be noticed more and more as the years peel by. The Bay Circuit Trail could have perished. Our little backyard could have been endless chains of development. But they courageously fought on. And that is why we have this treasure. It's a real gem. We have something really incredible. And it crosses 200 miles of our own state. And a lot of people, I know I'm repeating myself, but a lot of people have gone to a lot of work, um, spending some of them a good chunk of their lives working on this. We produced this video to find environmental heroes, people taking action to care for the earth. The bay is nearly silent as a cold, damp chill is accompanied by drops of rain. Deep red and a lifeless color infiltrates the green. There were fields of flowers then, and a birdhouse waiting for a tenant. A hawk searched in the sky for something to eat. It was a beautiful sight. Finally, we walked the last few feet of an amazing achievement, a 200-mile trail kept alive by sheer guts and determination. Together, our glass is full. There is always hope. This has been a tale about the keepers of the flame, those who chose to do battle with apathy and neglect. We hope that this is a tale of a great awakening. This is a tale of a 200 mile trail. And all of the heroes Called to the cause, we're taking a walk, 
We'll live in the talk Paying respect To the swamps and bogs The Bay Circuit Trail The Bay Circuit Trail videos that we did on the Bay Circuit Trail. You can see the videos for the individual days in their entirety on our website, which is e-awakening.com. Um, and when you go on the website on the Bay Circuit page, you'll see them broken out by 1 through 22 days. And underneath each one, it will tell you what towns are involved. So if you want to maybe see what the part is in Concord or Kingston, you can take a look at that specific video. But tonight, we would uh, like to close this part of the presentation with a song that to me sums up what you saw in the last video. And it's one of my favorites, and it's called One.
I was going to say questions, but I can't probably. We want to, what do you think, Wayne? Do you want to take time to questions? Uh, sure. People have this question. I mean, are you guys tired and ready? I mean, uh, we're not, but. If not, there, there, yeah, there's uh, still some food left, right? There's food, there's, there's refreshments out back. And, and there are brochures for the Bay Circuit Alliance on the table at, at the door. And yeah. for salt. And yes, thank you. For the Overland Foundation. It's a great program. I hope you get to present it to a lot of other groups uh, and help some land institutions. And uh, thank you so much. It's a lot of work. I know putting something like that together. Tremendous amount of work. And thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you for having us. Yes.